the best kind of hobby that anybody can have. And when I found out that my friend Joyce Foley was a quilter, I too got renewed interest in the topic and um, have been collecting books on it and said, I've yet to take a stitch. But hopefully, hopefully, with all of you here tonight, urging on those of us who would be quilters, maybe we can get more of us going. But Joyce is a dear friend. She is so active. I couldn't even put in our newsletter all the things that she has done. She has been in every organization, as you saw in the newsletter, that we can think of. It's just amazing how uh, wide her influence is in this community and, in fact, the greater Cincinnati community. And I'm not going to repeat all the things that I wrote about her in our newsletter. You've read those and I'm sure you, many of you know her as well. She's a member, long-standing and past president of the Florence Women's Club. And so many Women's Club members are here tonight and from Betty Carter Morgan Women's Club and perhaps others. And I thank you all for coming. And we really uh, are gonna be in for a treat tonight in spite of our little original glitch in which we are panicked. It, everything's working, right? All right. So I give you, without further ado, our friend, the greatest quilter in Boone County, Joyce Foley. <laughs> get started, this is my love, Butch Foley. <laughs> and I wanted to say that these are not quilt books that I've written. Uh, they're rather uh, reference books that I use for getting ideas on quilt blocks and, uh, and the quilt barn trail as well. Um, before I begin in what you call my talk, um, I haven't had a chance to see so many people who are involved with the Barn Quilt Trail in one place. So I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank people that I haven't been able to in public. So, um, first of all, how many people here have a Barn Quilt Trail? Show of hands. All right. <laughs> Uh, you've made this all possible. Obviously, without you, there would be no Barn Quilt Trail. And a big thanks to my husband, Butch, who designed our website and made 61 sets of trim and frames for the boards. When we first started, he asked, um, how many boards do you think you're going to have? And I said, oh, 22. And uh, as of now, we have 78. <laughs> Uh, I hasten to add that I have only painted 44, <laughs> and uh, Renetta and Dick McBride have painted 17, and 17 farmers have themselves painted their own, but are members of the Barnquil Trail. Also, we don't get paid, and all the monies are run through the treasure of the Florence Women's Club, just for your information. Um, are there any people from Florence Women's Club here? Yes. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more about them later. Um, and I, I, is there any chance that anybody from Owen Electric is here? Well, without them, well, <laughs> when you get these boards, they're four feet by eight feet. And a barn is tall. And I'm afraid of heights. And there's no way that I could hang a board on my own. So I called Owen Electric eight years ago and talked to someone about what I had in mind and they said, we'll get back to you. By the next morning they had gotten back to me and said that they would do it and we are entering our eighth year that they have been hanging boards for us. So uh, I wanted to give them a thank you. <laughs> um, I did want to say their names because if, if any of you know them, when you see them the next time, you can say that they were royally thanked. 
uh, Brian Knoll, Bill Sams, Kenny Berkemeyer, and Joe Schmeid. So those are the four that, uh, any combination of three have shown up for each one of these hangings. Are there any people here from the Licking Valley Quilters Guild? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, and I'll talk about you all more uh, later on. And are there any people here from the Stringtown Quilters? All right. Um, they allow us to display a quilt board at each National Quilting Day show. Uh, and Jane Farner and I do that um, once a year, and so we really appreciate that. Uh, we, we can get the word out to a different crowd. I saw Gary Wilmhoff here. So, hi Gary. Um, he's been a tremendous help from the start. Uh, sharing construction instructions with me and giving us painted costs from the Florence hardware store. He's the one who suggested the price, $350, for an eight foot by eight foot board because I had no idea. And it obviously really depends on how many different colors of paint that you choose. But a prospective buyer wants to know how much it costs before they plunk this, give me their decision. And I understand that totally. I want to know how much it's going to cost me as well. The 4x4 board costs every bit of the $100. Uh, there's nothing left. But from a $350 uh, 8 foot by 8 foot board, uh, we will use what money is left over for a banner for the Memorial Day parades, pencils with our website on it to be handed out at the senior picnic and other places, and the second printing of 2,500 of our brochures. And again, we ran out of brochures. I had no idea there was going to be this big a crowd. Um, so if you write your name down on that yellow piece of paper uh, and address, I'll be more than happy to send you one. And here's a big thanks to Herb Works, who um, works, who owns uh, Boone Kenton Lumber, and he has had his people <coughs> deliver these boards to my house for the last eight years because we don't have a pickup truck, and so they're just I don't know how to tie one of those on my car. And I, th I think you take flight when you do that. <laughs> uh, thanks to the Boone County Garden Club for helping with publicity. I see some people down there. Thank you. Thanks to the community press for covering all 78 boards. And after the first one, all the rest were in full color. I appreciate that very much. Thanks to Toyota, Bank of Kentucky, Ann Hood, Fisher Homes, and Mary Markson for their financial support. A big thanks to, Mark, to Matt Becker of the Boone County Planning Commission who cleared the way for us with the Zoning Commission. And I hadn't even thought of that, but I think they were afraid that we'd put a board up something like, drink RC Cola. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, and he also helped uh, me round up some of the very first uh, board owners so that I would have something, you know, drive down on Hathaway and you'll see a board and you know what I'm talking about. And I want to say that many of these blocks have several names. I'm going to use the name most familiar, as far as I can tell, to Kentuckians. For example, the block Sunbonnet Sioux is often called Little Dutch Girl in Kentucky. And in fact, I'm working on one of those right now in the basement, and it's a four by four. Uh, I don't do much in the, in the winter um, because um, um, I can't get those four by eight boards down in the basement. So I, I've taken off since November, and I'm about to start again. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is ask for a show of hands of everyone who has at least a quilt in your homes. Oh, am I talking to the right group? <laughs> wow, wow, that's wonderful. Uh, tonight I'm going to be filling you in on the National Barn Quilt Trail as well as our Barn Quilt Trail. By the way, tra the tr term trail is a misnomer. There really isn't a, an actual trail that you walk. Um, it's just an imaginary one. Perhaps you could call it a barn quilt route uh, in all 40 states. Uh, and the, the brochure has a map which will help you with our county. And you can uh, look it up on the internet and you can find, I think Rundy, Iowa has 100 boards. So there's a lot you can find on the internet. 
When folks come across an article in the Boone County Recorder about the barn quilt trail, they usually visualize someone nailing a real quilt to the side of a barn <laughs> and say, why would you want to do that? Or they think someone is selling quilts out of their barn. However, the quilt block, frame, and trim are screwed onto the barn and are made of wood. If you live east of I-7571 in our county, you may not have seen any of these quilt blocks because mostly western Boone County is where the barns are and therefore our boards. You can see a map of their location in the description. I thought I, oh, here we go. Um, for those of you who didn't get one, you can see you can't see what's on it, but there is a pretty good sized map here so that when you're driving around, uh, you'll be able to find your way. And uh, you do want to have, you know how people go 70 miles an hour on these little crooked roads. You do want to have a navigator with you so someone else is doing the reading while you're, you're driving. Believe me. <laughs> um, why do this project? Boone County was once a rural county, and in the 40s, there, more than half our population lived on farms. I'm going to say that again. In the 40s, more than half our people lived on farms. It's down to 1% today. So our children don't know what life is like on a farm, and most of their mothers are working, and they've never seen someone create a quilt. We're hoping that when a youngster sees one of these quilt boards, they will raise, raise questions and there'll be an opening for mom or dad to talk about the good old days. It can start a conversation between generations. And to me, quilts and barns are two of the most celebrated and recognized symbols of rural America. Tying the two together is what the Barn Quilt Trail does. The Florence Women's Club the original sponsoring group wants to provide public art for all to enjoy, Boone County residents and visitors alike. Many people view the boards like a scavenger hunt, like we had the pigs <coughs> and Pat. Pardon me. Uh, <laughs> uh, checking off the boards as they are located, something like the pigs in Cincinnati and the horses, Lexington or Louisville. Lexington, and there were cows in, uh, in uh, Wisconsin, I'm thinking uh, Madison, Madison, Wisconsin, so like that. And the website and the brochure do have GPS information to make locating the boards easier. And they are open 365 days a year, rain or shine, and are free to view. What more can you ask? A good trip for when your aunt comes at Thanksgiving and you don't know what to do with her. <laughs> so, back in 2001, Donna Sue Groves actually started the Barn Quilt Trail. She was reared in West Virginia where she was used to seeing things on barns, hex signs, chew mill pouch tobacco, Sea Rock City. So it was obvious that she might think of something uh, when she moved to Adams County, Ohio and their farm had a barn on it. Of course, she said it was the ugliest barn she had ever seen, so she needed to do something. Her mother is an avid quilter, so she said, we'll put a quilt block on that barn. So she was talking to other people, it caught on, and the next thing you know, they had over 20 boards, sort of an open air folk art gallery. Then it spread to the next county, and the next county, and the next county, until now it is in 40 states and Canada. Also today there are over 4,000 barn quilt boards up in the U.S. My hope was that Kenton County and Campbell County would follow us, uh, but as far as I know, and I could be way off, but as far as I know, I think there are only three in Kenton County and three in Campbell County. Uh, but uh, it's not too late, maybe they'll pick it up. I saw an article on this project at the Cincinnati Inquirer in 2004 and thought this was something that would be really neat to do in Boone County. But at the time, my plate was pretty full, and so I decided I just needed to put it aside for the time being. 
Then, at the September 2006 Florence Women's Club meeting, I was asked by the members what I planned to do with all my free time now that I wasn't president of the organization anymore. <laughs> I told them about my dream of a barn quilt trail in Boone County and seizing the opportunity, I asked them if they would be willing to sponsor this project. They agreed and gave me $500 seed money to get started. It was very helpful to have their backing, first because they are well known and well respected in the community, and also because they had just become a 501c3 designated nonprofit. Because of that status, I could go after grants. At that time, I had lived only eight years in Hamil uh, Hamilton County. That's where I lived before. <laughs> in Boone County. If the farmers didn't know me, at least they knew the Florence Women's Club and their good works. Well, in addition to informing our locals where the quilt boards were, we wanted to attract travelers off I-75. The website certainly helped and the brochure. I started a route of the libraries, the Extension Office, Dinsmore Homestead, AAA, Northern Kentucky Convention, Visitors Bureau, Cabin Arts Quilt Shop, Cabin Arts Quilt Shop, <laughs> <laughs> Big Bone Lake State Park, a few motels, and, and others. Uh, I was hoping that we could put brochures in the two visitor centers that are here in Boone County, but I'm guessing because Kentucky is in such dire straits financially, they don't man those buildings anymore. I bet you didn't know that. Uh, where the people were, that's closed, and they finally put a brochure uh, rack in the restroom building. So I, I, that would have been the best way for us to get people from out of town, so I'm really sorry that that happened. Maybe as times get better, uh, they'll open up the other building. We are listed in the Kentucky Arts Council webpage, which has been very helpful. Um, and we, did, if we get the word out, we will be able to draw people in off the highway. Uh, there are over 20 million quilters in the United States. Quilters Newsletter Magazine uh, had a questionnaire, well, probably five years ago now, and it was over 20 million people in the United States who quilt. So they want to know where we are. While they're here, they'll buy gas, They'll stop at a restaurant, they'll go to the mall, they'll go to the quilt shop. So it's, it's a good thing to have a barn quilt trail. We wanted to involve our youth too, and uh, Tammy Grimes called us to ask if we could show her 4-H girls how to paint a board for the fairgrounds. They chose the Iowa Star quilt block and tucked in 4-H's in the petals. I scratched out sketched out the design for them and introduced them to painter's tape. And they did a fantastic job. And a local Boy Scout troop has volunteered to do a board, but sorry guys, I cannot imagine 15, 12 year old boys with wet paint brushes. <laughs> I kept top of mind too, the farmers who had taken part in the government tobacco quota buyout Farmers were now looking for other ways to make money off their farms. Over a dozen boards are located on barns where the residents <coughs> offer such activities as raising alpacas and selling the wool for yarn, raising hair sheep that don't have to be sheared, having a corn maze, selling plants and vegetables, selling maple syrup, conducting hay rides, selling honey, having a music festival, and so on and so on. In fact, there is an entertaining site that you might want to look at when you get home. KentuckyFarmersAreFun.com <laughs> KentuckyFarmersAreFun.com It tells you all kinds of things about what's happening in farms in Kentucky. Obviously, I would need someone to hang the boards for me, and I've talked about that. Um, from the beginning, I told the farmers that they could pick, up, pick out their own quilt blocks and their own paint because they were spending good money and they, I wanted them to be very pleased with it. We are now the proud owners of 65 half-filled quarts of paint. <laughs>
So I move them downstairs in the winter, I move them upstairs in the summer. <laughs> yeah. There are requirements. The four requirements for the boards are that they should be seen from the road, since we want public art, and it is a community service project of the Florence Women's Club. They be located in Boone County, no block be duplicated, and that should be easy because you can see from these books there are over 5,000 named blocks. So you ought to be able to find one you like. And finally, that we can use the images to publicize the Barn Quilt Trail, such as in the brochure, the website, and newspaper articles. You'll remember I said the Florence Women's Club, being a 501c3 nonprofit, allowed me to go after grants. I approached Toyota and found out I had to complete a 20-page grant proposal. Has anyone, oh, that was terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, I had first decided to ask them for $700, which would cover the cost of two boards, two eight by eight boards, uh, to give to people who wanted a board but couldn't afford it. Then I thought, in for a penny, in for a pound. So I asked for $10,000. <laughs> Uh, the, the purpose was to, to uh, uh, produce these brochures. The worst they could do is say no. Uh, maybe no forever. <laughs> well, in the end, they awarded the project $2,500. Way more than the original $700 I was planning to ask for. Then, al along with the Bank of Kentucky and Fisher Homes donations, plus the Florence Women's Club $500, was enough to print up 5,000 four-color brochures. And uh, we have now gone through those, and uh, we raised more money and got 3,500, and I was looking today, and we have just over 1,000 left. Then I've got to start worrying again. <laughs> so let's get to some barn boards. Um, I don't think we have to turn the lights down. No. Okay. Um, shall I tell you when? Or Okay. Uh, many blocks have several names, and as I've said, I'm using the one most familiar to the Kentuckians. Many people choose red, white, and blue for their boards. And I'm thrilled with that, but also appalled because red takes four coats of paint for a good coverage. And you, should, you have a damp spring that paint never dries. So, the board we're looking at right now belongs to Virginia Adams. She chose Texas Broken Star because she was reminded of the starry nights. Her mother, Lucy Allen, was a teacher, but in her spare time she and Virginia made and sold quilts. Virginia and her husband, Harold, bought this farm from her Aunt Reba Sister in 1966. I'm trying to add a little bit of this for you men who've lived here all your lives and you might recognize some names. It was previously owned by other relatives, such as her cousins, the Becknells, going back a hundred years. I've driven by her house several times in the summer, and she sits on her porch and waves at the cars as they slow down to view her barn board, and it really makes me feel good when I see that. Um, no, okay, I just got an email this afternoon saying that uh, Judy and uh, Jerry Biedenhorn were coming back from Gettysburg so they wouldn't be here tonight, but this is their star, Liberty Star, first published in 1855, a very old blog. They both love American history. Judy is a member of the Ladies Living Social History history of Cincinnati, where they dress up in period costumes, and Jerry is interested particularly in the Civil War. She said for me to say they go to the Gettysburg three or four times a year, and so they are actually on the road right now coming back from Gettysburg, so that proves the point. Okay. Karen and Jim Lee got this block, Army Star, because their son-in-law is in the service. It was created by two soldiers during World War II. They were quoted as saying their efforts were, and I quote, in appreciation of the many thoughtful deeds of American women for soldiers, unquote. The block first appeared in the Kansas City Star during World War II. Okay. This is a location where I cold called the barn owner because his barn was located high on a hill with no trees around it. 
This was my first encounter with a junkyard dog. <laughs> this project has really made me appreciate mail carriers who do deal with dogs every day. Um, Bob Reeves said he'd think about it. Later he called and said no. Sometime later he called back and said yes, because his barn was freshly painted. And you can tell it's a beautiful white barn. So we hung an Ohio Star variation. Uh, pardon me. A member of the Austin Healy Car Club had seen an article in the Inquirer about our project and they offered to pay for a board. So this is the only time someone else picked out the block, not the owner. After it was all painted, I sent the car club member an email with a photo of the barn attached. I always do that because if there's something they don't like, I can't fix it when we're out in the field about to put it up on the barn. So I, I did that and he replied, oops. I don't like to hear oops. <laughs> The female members of the club had wanted blue in the design as well, and he had forgotten to get back to me. So I tried some blue to the four corners, and that's why we call it variation. And I think Linda called it Swamp Angel, but I like, uh, I like the Ohio star variation better. You should have told me not to say that we wouldn't have is that right? <laughs> it would have been all right. Huh? Yeah, it would have been fine. Oh, okay. George Ripberger's sister bought this Stars and Stripes board for him for his birthday. The timing was just right for the Florence Women's Club because we were able to use it in the Florence, uh, Florence Memorial Day Parade bef uh, before we hung it on, on the barn. So it, the timing was perfect. This is an example of an agritourism farm. Now they raise alpacas after receiving advice from Jerry Brown. The block is called Sugarloaf and dates back from 1860. Linda Salisbury had an antique table runner with this pattern. After painting the block like the one in the runner, I emailed her the image as usual. She emailed me back that it was too bland. So I added plaid to the background, dipped dots to the ecru color, and she was happy. And after it was done, I totally agree with her. She was absolutely right. Okay. The children bought their dad at Houston Samples, this Four Winds board, for his birthday. They thought it was a fitting block since their property catches every breeze in the county. Over time, several of the outbuildings have been blown down or damaged. He particularly liked that the blue was UK blue. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Okay. Janet Seabree picked out the sunbeam block. A sunbeam block, as you might expect, is usually done in oranges, yellows, and sometimes reds. But Janet doesn't like orange. So she chose red, white, and blue. And it turned out very pretty, but it is called sunbeam. I haven't told you how I get the barns. Sometimes people will call or email me, but most of the time I drive around the county looking for good barns and uh, they can be seen from the road. At least half the time they say no, but the ones who say yes have great locations. And that was the case with Selma Conrad who chose Waterwheel. Don't go away, that's it. <laughs> she said during the flood of 37, her father and uncle saw lumber floating down the river. Upstream, a lumber yard probably had been inundated. They got a little fishing boat and went out into the river to capture the lumber. They did it over and over again, even though neither one of them knew how to swim. Selma said they had enough lumber to build a barn and several outbuildings that are still there. <laughs> okay. John D. Smith's friend, Cassette Spill, bought this country patriotic flag block and she found this design on the internet. And for all of you people here, please don't look on the internet. <laughs> um, call me first, I've got a lot of books and some of the ones on the internet are, are hokey and they've got funny names and they've just been created and it's really a lot more fun when you get one that's been around for a while. Uh, Shannon Guest bought her family 
the George Buttigs, a quilt board called Best of All. They have owned this 350-acre farm for 20 years. Uh, before that, it was owned by R.C. Durr. Butch and Marianne Wainscott chose the Crossroads board for their barn on Bellevue Road. Their daughter, Maggie, wanted money for college, so they hired her to hand brush the barn red. This was in 2010, that horribly hot summer. She did the three sides and left the back that couldn't be seen from the road <laughs> unpainted. She has now graduated from college, and as far as I know, that back of the barn has still not been painted. <laughs> Uh, okay. Suzanne and her son Samuel Burris designed this block, so it's an original, and they call it Liberty Compass. Her husband Gary wrote, and I quote, With all that is going on in the world today, it is sometimes hard for people to recognize the freedoms they enjoy living in the United States of America, unquote. And uh, he, they put their barn up about six years ago, so it still holds true, doesn't it? Uh, of course, we do use colors other than red, white, and blue. Um, many, many quilt blocks are stars, probably more than anything else. I'm going to speed up a little since I feel such a responsibility to show lots of blocks um, for people tonight, and I don't want to leave your block out if you have one. But then again, just how long can we sit? <laughs> so. One of the first boards we put up was for Pat and Tom O'Hara. Since they didn't have a large barn, we hung an eight-pointed star on their shed door, and it worked out just fine. Okay. Tracy and David Beck chose Hunter's Star because they liked to hunt, and they said if we couldn't find one for hunting, they liked stars. Well, lo and behold, there is a block called Hunter's Star. Someone was telling me that they really love this one. I do, too. Patty Burkle's children bought this starry path block um, in her memory. Okay. This star of the bluegrass was copied from a Dinsmore homestead quilt. If you haven't visited this farmhouse, you should. It's filled with furniture, clothing, everything you can imagine from the 1840s. One family lived there the whole time, and they never threw anything away. So uh, they do give tours in the summertime, and I highly recommend it. It's just down on 18. won't take you any time at all to get there. Okay? I've been meaning to go get another picture of this board, because it's <laughs> kind of fuzzy. Uh, Tammy and Rod Collins chose this Lemoyne star block and had it hung on their house. So if you don't have a barn, there are other things we could do, okay? Marlene and Daryl Ford had me sketch out the designs on three different boards, and then Marlene added the color. This one is called Rolling Star Block. Debbie and Bill Hyland chose Grandmother's Choice. By the way, there are over 25 blocks with some form of grandmother in the just bet you didn't know that. Okay. Nancy and Peter Blackmore chose this block because it was his favorite evening star. So when you go to Jane's saddlebag and look at look at the big tall black barn and that's it's up in the peak. Mary Johnson picked out the Kentucky Star. You'll notice a lot of people picked out blocks that had the name Kentucky in them, and I think that's really neat. This one is called Kentucky Star. And I can't z zoom past this one. Uh, Mary was told the little house, the little cabin that is incorporated into the bigger house on Botts Lane dates back to the 1820s. They were told it was a greenery before the Civil War. As far as we can go back, the property was owned by John W. and Mary Gaines in the 1880s, then George and Dorothy Voschel, then Rachel G-S-C-U-W-I-N-G, Schwind, then Botts 
Hill Farms and Alna and Joyce Dickerson. I did this for Bruce Ferguson and he's not here tonight. <laughs> uh, and then it was uh, bought, uh, bought by the Johnsons. Okay. Marilyn and Tom Leathers picked out Shooting Star. And he's the one that loves quilts in the family. And he remembers playing underneath the quilt rack when he was a child. This, this shows you, I thought you ought to see what the Owen Electric people do. So this is a shot of them on ladders and uh, with a cherry picker truck. Um, but as I said, it takes three. You, you can see right now they're putting the yellow strip or trim up. And that's one of the things that Butch does. 61. <laughs> okay, next one. Um, Bob and Glenna Moorhead's daughter-in-law, Holly, painted two boards for them. This one is called Kentucky Star Variation. These are the Moorheads who had the Moorhead Boat Harbor and Restaurant until a tornado flipped the barge over uh, that it was riding on, so that was the end of that. Okay. Belva and Jimmy King were given this summer star flower by their nephew, Farrell Turner, because he said the kings were so hard to buy for. So. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, Brenda and Joe Parker picked out Amish Broken Star, and I sometimes call it Carpenter's Square, and it was painted by her 86-year-old uncle for them. Okay. Fran Piper has two blocks. This one is Cherokee Star. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that it looks like it's not against the barn, and it isn't. It's, uh, it's uh, planted out uh, on uh, <coughs> wooden stakes. Four by fours? Four by fours. Um, and, and she had someone put it into the ground. If you put it into the ground, we'll give you a board, but we don't know how to, we don't want to dig a hole. <laughs> Okay, next. Jean and Ed Moorhead picked out this variable star block because Ed likes red. And according to Don Goldsmith, quote, historians say the pattern variable star in a flurry of patriotism toward the individual states in 1815 were renamed Ohio Star. The um, Moorhead's prefab barn was built in the late 1800s in Virginia then it was floated down the Ohio River um, and landed at Hamilton Landing in Boone County. Then the parts were hauled up Big Bone Church Road by horse and wagon, mm -hmm. and uh, it is a pegboard. And uh, until just a few years ago, they could say that there were no nails and no screws in it. But recently, two different cars going very fast, turning around the curb, have plowed into the barn. So now it has a few nails and a few screws. Okay. Uh, the first board in Boone County was Gary Wilmhoff's Kentucky Twinkling Star. He has another one just down the road called Turkey. That's the last of the star boards. But we have other beautiful blocks. <laughs> Fran and Fred Baum were gifted Country Roads by relatives. You'll understand the name Country Roads if you go there, because they live way back, Ryle Road, you know, the one that's falling into the river. <laughs> yeah. They wanted a board bright enough so that the people across the way in Indiana could see it, and indeed they can. And for those interested in this kind of thing, there is a Grimsley Family Cemetery on the property. Um, okay. Alfred Setter's board is the one Licking Valley Quilt Guild paid for, ladies. Um, it looks quite a bit like their logo. It was the closest uh, we could, uh, legitimate block we could use to get to their logo, and it is called Interlocked Rings. Okay. This was an oops barn on my part. Bruce Ferguson said I could pick out the colors and block for his barn. He didn't care. I chose corn and beans because they have a corn maze in the fall. 
I painted it blue and green because I liked that side of the color wheel. Later I read in an old quilt history book that this block is always painted yellows and greens. So at least I got one right. <laughs> okay. This was the first board I did back in 2007. Um, Margaret and Bob Maurer chose Bear's Paw. In Vermont, it's called Duck's Foot in the Mud. <laughs> Guess they have more ducks than bears there. Uh, and Bob is the farmer who raises hair sheep. Gary Wilmhoff had so much tr trouble. I don't know if he had trouble or not. <laughs> Gary Wilmhoff had so much fun having two quilt boards made that he and Jerry Ruoff bought my old Kentucky hit my old Kentucky home for Ralph Hutchinson. So that's the next one, sorry. Some of you might recognize it also as my little red schoolhouse. Okay. Alice Ryle's children bought her a board. She wanted little red schoolhouse because so many people in her family were and still are teachers, including her husband Larry, who was superintendent of Boone County Schools for four years. However, the board we just saw is also called by that name, and we don't have duplicates. So she picked Shortcut to School. And, uh, and I love that board. Um, there was once a one-room schoolhouse at the bottom of their property, and people did indeed go across their yard taking a shortcut to get to this school. So really, it worked out better than the other. They can trace their family in Boone County back to 1790, when brothers John and James Ryle came to Petersburg, then called Tanner's Lane. She used the board image on a Christmas card, and, and I was really happy to see that. Speaking of Christmas cards, Nancy Treader and Pat Jones also sent out cards with their block, Lucky Star, on it. The barn was built about 1944 by Pat's dad, Ralph Jones. Okay. Mary Sue and Bill Rudisill bought two boards. The second one hangs at their daughter Paul Lavasky's house. This block is called Kentucky Lily and is believed to be the only original Lily block without a duplication. Um, I took all the photos you're seeing tonight, all 77, except for this one, for better or for worse. But this photo was taken by a professional photographer who, who lives here named Chris Allen. So uh, if you ever need anything, any pictures taken, uh, remember that Chris Allen helped our project. About the barn. It seems a Hollywood scout was looking at barns in Boone County for the movie Seabiscuit. Remember that from three years ago, maybe? Four years ago? They really like the Vasky barn. Well, as funding goes for movies, over a year passed, and then another year passed, and the Vaskies heard nothing more. So they decided, well, this isn't going to happen, and they painted the barn a real pretty red with white trim. Finally, the Hollywood folks came back and were horrified that the barn had been painted. They wanted an old, weathered, gray barn. So it never became a Hollywood star. Okay. Speaking of lilies, this basket of lilies was painted and hung all by herself, Sandy Franklin. Okay. Peggy and Dr. John Ammons chose the maple leaf block because they are certified tree surgeons. <laughs> Farmers. <laughs> So this block was perfect. They have oaks, maples, walnuts, bald cypress, and yellow poplars. The block is old, first published in 1887. Sue and Matt Beck painted and hung their own board, Maple Leaf. Yes, we already have a Maple Leaf board, hence the duplicate. But if you do it yourself, you can do anything you want. And the other was one leaf. And this has four, so it really does look different. Okay. Other flower boards include May and Ed Foley's, no relation, Grandmother's Flower Garden. May took this block 
uh, and coloring from her quilt that her grandmother gave her. It was very popular in the 30s. Um, and the fold, well, as I said, the folies are no relation to us. Um, okay. Jimmy Turner's flower board is called Grandmother's Star, one of the 25, and uh, was made by his mother. He still has the pattern that she ordered from the Cincinnati Post. Do any, are you, any of you old enough to remember when you could do that? You'd send in your quarter, and then they'd send you back your, the pattern. I think they allowed you to send stamps, too, maybe. Okay. This one belongs to Brenda and Jimmy Parker, Barker, and is called Tulip. They have the first farm winery in Kentucky, Barker's Blackberry Wine, Hill Winery. And they are way at the bottom of the, of the county as well. Okay. Linda and Dan Wittenberg chose Log Cabin because her quilt shop is a log cabin. This block was so-called because it was popular during Abe Lincoln's presidency because he was our log cabin president. Linda's shop is over 20 years old now and is the only, <clears throat> is the only business with a block on it. Hint, hint to any other businesses. Okay. And I'll see you. <laughs> This farm was originally owned by the Gaines family who migrated into Kentucky from Virginia and New England in the 1800s. Carolyn Hollis Nixon's family bought the farm in the early 1950s when it contained 450 acres. The barn has seen many storms, a tornado in 1972, Hurricane Ike in 2008, but it has weathered the storms with a lot of work. Carolyn found this block Amish split rail fence on the internet, but it's very pretty. Okay. This card trick block is on the garage of Granny's Garden. So a lot of you people second generation remember Granny's Garden. <laughs> Belinda and Charles Sipple live there now and completed the board themselves. Carol and Paul Clore were also involved. Longtime Boone County residents will remember the Clores. Speaking of the Clores, Renee and Bill Mark live in the Glor family house, and then they've been told that it's the same family. Bill's mom made him this churn dash quilt, but I'm calling it by its other popular name, Hole in the Barn Door, <laughs> because it definitely has a hole in the barn. <laughs> It is the only documented double crib log barn in the county. The first owner, William Glore, was a blacksmith, and this is where he worked. So the other, you can see the outside, they've left some of the outside, all the caulking's gone. The barn dates back to the mid-1800s, uh, and as you can see, it has another barn built over it to protect it. You probably didn't know it existed, did you? because it's kind of hard to see from the road. It's located on Big Bone Road, where all the barn, where all the buildings have roofs painted red. So when you go down uh, Big Bone Road and you're getting close to Beaver, it'll be on your left. Um, okay. Kay and Bob Garnett picked out this Virginia Reel block, an old mountain mist pattern. You, and any of you quilters know mountain mist. Kay's mother, Dorothy Hambrick, used this block in a quilt for Kay's daughter, so it has a lot of meaning for her. Okay. Um, you almost need to be a little closer to see the, the painting because um, the beautiful little flowers in it, and uh, Renetta McBride did that. I didn't. I wouldn't have had the patience, probably. Uh, Chris and Joe Cease are the owners of this double wedding ring quilt block. Chris chose purple to be featured because her dad had Alzheimer's, and purple is the uh, official color for Alzheimer's Association. When they bought the property in 1986, they were in for a big surprise. They opened the barn door, only to find, written in chalk, Chrissy loves Joey. And of course, those are their names. Not only that, but the ceases discovered, etched in the pad of the barn, May 9, 1958, 
the day the concrete was poured. Chris and Joe were married on May 9th. Oh. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hannah and Butch Grebau picked out Pinta, Nina, and Santa Maria for their garage. You can put them on the garages because they live along the Ohio River as well. Okay. Um, that's an electric line you see across. Uh, Pat and Patty Rafferty picked out chasing tails because they have so many dogs, cats, and horses. Okay. The Road to Paradise was the block Gary and Susan Bentle chose. It's a memorial to Susan's mother, Lucille Turner, who quilted every week at the Florence Christian Church during the 1990s and organized annual quilt shows at the church. This is where I stepped on a black walnut and fractured my foot. Wore a boot for six weeks. Such fun. Between rabid dogs having a gun pulled on me, and I haven't told you about that one, and fracturing my foot, I'm beginning to think quilting is dangerous. <laughs> I do carry the fear that people will move away from their boards and new people will take the boards down. Uh, okay. When the bookers moved away and left their board mariner's compass, the new owners, John and Kalinda Mischief, contacted me to say they would keep the board up. And I, I appreciate that very much. Um, okay. Marsha Shaney White moved away from her board, Drunkard's Path. I need to contact the new owners. Um, I believe the board truly is holding up the milk shed that it's on. <laughs> so they might want to tear it down. Um, Marsha felt this block was appropriate for the location. Bikers rode by on weekends, enjoying the country air as they motored on down to Rabbit Hash for refreshment, <laughs> liquid refreshment. They always, uh, they aren't always that steady as they come back home. By the way, I used a trash can lid to make the stencil for the pattern. You've got to think big when you do these things. Okay. It's fitting that I should save the last quilt board for Laverne Lawson. The board is called Hidden Star. She is a foreign, former Florence Women's Club president. In addition to being very active in our club, she has been a life member of the St. Elizabeth Hospital Auxiliary for 17 years. It's interesting that the farmers have become our county oral historians as they are asked and answer questions about their farms and families. That, that was unexpected. It's wonderful, but I didn't think about that. So, I'm sorry I haven't shown over 30 other quilt boards, but there's only so long that an audience can sit. These other barns are all equally as beautiful and, and worth a trip. As I said earlier, they are all free to view and open 365 days a year, rain or shine. And I'll finish with this little story. One day a lady called me and said, asked if I would talk to their church group. And as I always do, I try to get a feel for the group so I can direct uh, points of interest that only they would appreciate. So uh, I, she told me that they were seniors. I says, okay. And she said, uh, they get together once a month, they bring potluck, and they go down to the undercroft, and uh, they have a nice meal. So I asked, well, how long should the talk be? And she replied, well... They will have just had a nice meal. We're going to turn the lights out for the power presentation. It had better be short. They tend to nod off. <laughs> Thank you very much.